Canberra was conceived as a landscape city. It's a city that's connected by a framework of avenues. Constitution Avenue was an unfinished part of that framework. So our primary objective was to restore Constitution to the original concept of a grand urban boulevard connecting the city to the landscape. Creating this vast avenue for pedestrians, still allowing for traffic flow through there, but yeah, just minimising it to a couple of lanes either side. Part of that objective was to bring life to the city, to make the place where people want to go that's comfortable and delightful. I think that we know now that uh, the urban heat island effect is a thing uh, and that we need to be planting trees to reduce the temperature on the ground. We know that trees reduce the temperature underneath them by 10 degrees. When you're looking at urban trees and trees as an urban amenity, if you didn't have a tree canopy, you'd have a stick stuck in the ground. We're looking at making sure we're getting shade from those trees so people can sit under them to allow activation of that space to give economic value to the adjacent premises. They're also really essential for, for habitat. It provides life to a city. I can't imagine a city without trees. The basic tree on both sides of the avenue is Quercus roba, an English oak. We could also get supply of those at a fairly mature state. Quercus palastris, just doing fantastic. And I think if you look around Canberra, it's one of the most best performing trees around. In my 35 years of contracting, and we've done a lot of subdivisions in Canberra, probably done the most of anyone else. I think it's one of the most important aspects of growing trees in that situation. So when you're looking at urban trees and you're trying to build a root volume for them to operate in, you have to protect them from the compaction that's required for pavements. First of all, our rainfall here is quite low. We need to harvest as much water as we can to promote good tree growth in these areas, which are basically bare. We, we can grow beautiful trees for a long period of time, adding value to the subdivision, adding value to the people using these areas. And that's always been my view, whenever they upgrade an area, you should just bite the bullet, pull the trees out. The technology that's available now wasn't available then. If we're gonna spend the money, let's do it properly. The upfront cost might seem a lot at the beginning, but I think what you're saving maintenance and long term, it's a no-brainer really. We've been developing recently the structural soils and strata vault and looking at how much soil volume we need. We really need to keep developing those technologies to allow us to green our cities. I love the system, yeah. I think it's easy to install uh, structural soil it's probably easier to place, but the work involved in stabilising structural soil is a lot more. Whereas the strata soils, and you're not compacting it as much, you're letting it sit there. I think it's a great system. One important thing I think needs to be done in any situation, you need to allow enough room for the tree to grow for a long time. And I think the size of the pit is very important. We needed to get some much more urban sort of tree holes in there, so the strata vault actually really helped with that to get the volume of soil that we needed. And we did really need some help to specify them because you really need to get the depths right and you need to get the top of them where the paving needs to be. But we did actually send the details back to strata vault, the strata vault team, and, and we got comments back from them which was really helpful in, in the end to know how wide, how deep, etc. I think the change is phenomenal. We can see now that it's got a very strong geometry. There's a really clear link to City Hill. There's seating there, there's everything you want, and the trees are just fantastic. It's been transformed from a really dusty area that's dominated by car parks into a really comfortable plaza for people. 